This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or for more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to Farm Factor as Dwayne and Dr. Jeff Whitworth discuss the top pests that Kansas's alfalfa producers need to look out for. Dwayne Thames joining you with Ag AM in Kansas and while well, the Kansas Forage and Grassland Council winter meeting in Manhattan. Chance to catch up with Jeff Whitworth uh, from K-State Research and Extension and Entomology Department. Uh, Jeff, uh, you had the opportunity to talk to growers about uh, insect control in alfalfa and there's some predominant ones that, uh, that we seem to have to deal with each and every year. Yes, unfortunately there are. Um, the alfalfa weevil is the one that causes problems every year. It's one of the two insects in Kansas that I consider to be a serious or severe pest. The other one's a sunflower head moth on sunflowers. But what that means is you have to spray for them every year. Uh, so if you want to, if you do not want to donate part of your crop, you're going to have to treat for the alfalfa weevil. And that's the ins insect of interest for most alfalfa producers in Kansas. The problem with the alfalfa weevil is it's very active. It comes on very early, uh, anywhere from late February to mid-April. And as you know, Duane, the weather can be uh, very different at that time of year. You can have hot, cold, uh, snow, sleet all kinds of vagaries in the weather and that causes havoc with trying to control the alfalfa weevil. Plus the alfalfa weevil uh, overwinters in Kansas but it's a cool weather insect so anytime the temperatures above 48 to 50 degrees it's active. So right now uh, in November, December it's been laying eggs in the stems. Those eggs are developing a little bit anytime the temperatures over 48 to 50 degrees and then they'll continue to feed, the adults will, they will continue to lay eggs in January, February, and March. Those eggs that were laid in November and December will hatch early. Those eggs that were laid in January, February, and March won't hatch until April or May. So you have um, two to three months period of time when those eggs are hatching and those larvae, that's the damaging stage, are actually feeding in the alfalfa. So it makes it very difficult to try and time the application of an insecticide uh, once you decide you needed to treat. With the alfalfa weevil, it's not so much as if you need to treat, it's more when are you going to treat. Um, so that's what we've been looking at is trying to figure out the best way to time uh, applications to help control alfalfa weevils. Quick thoughts on the other pest that is typically a problem for us? The other pest that I consider year after year is potato leafhopper. Uh, that's an insect that I don't think gets enough credit for as much damage as it does. It can cause it can cause damage two different ways. Number one, it sucks the juice out of the plant. Number two, it introduces a toxin into the plant and can cause what we call hopper burn, which is a yellowing of the leaves. If they're severe enough, it can go down the, the stem, can actually kill out a plant. Um, usually in Kansas in the, in the last few years we haven't had populations uh, enough to cause death of plants but in the last two or three years we we're noticing increase in populations and we're, they don't overwinter in Kansas. Potato leaf hoppers before have not overwintered in Kansas. Uh, in the last two years we found them in late October uh, and they're doing damage in late October which is an anomaly because as you know most uh, growers cut four times, maybe five times a year, and they quit in September, October, and let that regrowth occur so it can put some food stocks down into the root system. Well, when you have potato leafhoppers there in October and November causing the, the deadening of the plant, killing the plants out, that's not going to happen. So uh, we've not seen it before. I hope it's just an anomaly. I hope it doesn't continue to be a problem. But in the last two years, 2014, 2015, the potato leafhoppers have been here um, clear up through October. We haven't looked in November and December and I'm really kind of scared to go out and look. They might still be there, but normally they don't overwinter in Kansas. Our thanks to Jeff Whitworth with Entomology Department at Kansas State University joining us at the Kansas Forage and Grassland Council annual meeting and winter conference in Manhattan. Jamie, back to you. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom, and I hope you enjoyed today's show. See you next week on Farm Factor. We're here every Tuesday on Ag AM in Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers.